Hello, in this video we're taking a look at subsurface scattering in Blender EV versus Cycles. So first of all, what is subsurface scattering? You have probably seen an image like this before, where light seems to be traveling through the fingers, through skin. You can also observe this in other natural materials like fruits and uh, plants. So when light hits an object that has a subsurface scattering material, some of the light gets reflected. But some of the light actually enters the object and part of that gets absorbed, so it basically disappears. Some of the light gets scattered around and escapes the object on the same side that it entered. And some of the light gets scattered around inside the object and exits on the opposite side. All of this, of course, happens all at the same time. Now, on a place where the material or the object is actually thicker, we have the same reflection on the surface. More light gets absorbed because it doesn't make it out. Some of the light, again, exits on the same side that it entered and less light makes it through and that's why then it appears darker when you're looking at the object from the opposite side of the light source. Now let's check this out in Blender. This is Blender 2.8 and at the time of this recording this is still the alpha version. First of all let me delete the default cube and add a monkey. And we're going to move this light to be, whoops, to be in front of the monkey. And add two levels of subdivision surface by pressing Ctrl and 2. Right. And I'm going to switch over to Cycles. And make the background completely black. Now if I switch to rendered view, this is what it looks like in cycles. I'm also going to shade the monkey head smooth. Now this is just a regular diffuse material. So I'm going to open my node editor, now called shader editor. Add a new material, which automatically now uses the principled BSDF. I'm going to set the material color to complete white, just for demonstration purposes, and the subsurface color to sort of a pinkish skin flesh color. Now when I turn on subsurface slider all the way to one, we get a pinkish monkey head. And that's exactly what we've seen before in the little schematics. Light from the light source that is now in front of the monkey hits the surface. Some of it is being reflected. Some of it actually enters the object, gets scattered around and comes back out, exits the object in the direction that it came from so the camera can pick it up. But since the color of the flesh of the inside of the object actually has a pinkish tint, we now get a pink monkey head. Let me also turn up the energy, the strength of this uh, light here. And now I'm going to move the light to the back of the monkey. And what you can see now, I'm going to turn this up even more, is the light coming through the object. So this the light emitted from this light here actually enters the object. Since in this part the object is very thick, most of the light gets absorbed. But for example at the uh, thinner parts like the ear or this chin down here, some light actually makes it through and it makes it look like the object is glowing. Let me just move around the lamp here so we can get a better feel for what this actually does. As soon as we come to the front, we still get some pink surface. 
If we just have backlight, all we get is just the light that actually makes it through. As you can see in blender cycles, this is actually a very time-consuming uh, process. With just 32 samples here in my preview window, it takes quite a while for it to render and it creates quite a bit of noise and fireflies. Now let's switch over to Blender EV. Right, the first thing we see is that in EV, our uh, principled BSDF without the subsurface uh, switched on is just this gray white material. And when I switch on the subsurface, we get this pinkish tint. But to get more realistic subsurface scattering, we actually have to switch it on here. Uh, global leaf just for the entire EV engine and also go to our materials tab and switch on screen space subsurface scattering and now this looks a lot nicer and we have the lamp in front of the object and when I move it around you can see we get this nice skin like almost like a bit of a translucent plastic material but when I move the lamp to the back of the object, now in EV, we don't have that translucent light coming through. And that is because we still have to go to our material and actually enable subsurface translucency. And now we also have the light coming through the thinner parts of the object, like the ear and the chin. And now this is actually rendered in real time as I move around. And I think this just looks very nice. And I'm surprised that this can be done at this level of detail and quality in real time. And here we have our comparison. On the left, we have the cycles render at 1024 samples and that took 35 seconds and on the right we have the EV render with the same resolution that took half a second. Right guys, let me know what you think about Blender EV and the comparison to cycles. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'm gonna see you next time.